Hello and welcome to Grad Dialogue. You know, today is our executive committee meeting of the Grad uh, Board and it seems like the whole meeting was devoted into the hazard mitigation planning and some of the resiliency, you know, project and everything else. So we're going to talk about the second segment of the show, uh, talking about the resiliency planning. So I'm, for, for that, I have my uh, guest uh, is uh, Stephen Kaufman. Uh, let, me, uh, let me read some introduction. Uh, Stephen Kaufman is the Saxon Chief for Infrastructure Development and Recovery within the Vulnerabilities Assessment Branch at the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, CISA. That's pretty CISA. impressive right there. He has over 30 years of professional experience and has, has, has a leadership position on high profile projects, including, are you ready? The World Trade Center investigation, renaissance of building and infrastructure performance following the Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Rita, and resiliency programs at the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And now uh, he's with the DHS at the CISA, which is the Department of Homeland Security Office. Steve, welcome. Thank and, you. Uh, again, I want to th thank you and also the whole team that you brought with you, you know, from, okay, from Utah to, to, to uh, Washington, D.C., and also right. from Lexington to grad and talk to the judges about the, you know, the, this project and everything else. So let's kind of start out with that, you know, what is resiliency planning and why it is so important for us to look into those. Sure. So we think of buildings and infrastructure uh -huh. office, uh, oftentimes as a collection of assets. Um, but really those assets exist to support human activity, whether it's social activity, economic activity. And they really exist as part of a larger system. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what we try to do with resilience planning is understand the importance of those systems to the social and economic uh, objectives of the region, uh, use that as a way of establishing importance, and think about how those systems function or uh, in an interdependent, uh, connected fashion. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to do that uh, in a hazard independent way first, and then as we apply the hazards, understand how the system might respond mm -hmm. and try to identify where there are gaps in performance that could uh, have detrimental impacts. You know, previously we talked to Nick Greenstead, you know, from, uh, from FEMA office in the UK about the hazard mitigation plan for right. GRAD, and we got funding for that, and we're going to be working on those things. So how, in a kind of in layman's term, how would that connect to the resiliency plan? Sure. So resiliency planning is really a, a different lens uh -huh. of looking at the community and of, of buildings and infrastructure. Um, we see resiliency planning as uh, being a, a means to identify where uh, priorities exist for mm -hmm. action. Uh, those priorities may be, uh, you know, solved in terms of uh, direct construction. They may be things that can be solved through uh, things like uh, uh, an administrative policy. I see. I see. Um, and so we see this as informing not only the hazard mitigation plan where there are specific mitigation right. uh, projects or actions that can be accomplished, but also perhaps informing other plans. Maybe it's the comprehensive plan that would govern development. Uh, it might be mm -hmm. land use planning. Uh, it could be economic development planning. So we see resilience planning as being a, a different lens of looking at buildings and infrastructure. So like in our case, uh, you know, we, we, we are an MPO, Metropolitan Planning right. Organization. So the planning we do for the MPO, identifying some of the transportation needs, you know, and, and, and infrastructure there. Then we also had the regional water and sewer, you know, agency, uh, which is uh, looking at the water and sewer projects and, you know, and then all seven counties and all that. Then we got the economic development you know, group that looks at the com comprehensive economic development strategies to get some federal funds for that too. So you're talking about all those along with some of the human services too that we provide, the kind of working together to see how we get ready in, in, in our, uh, to, to, to support the hazard mitigation or the disaster or something like that. Is that? Yes, that, okay. that's okay. absolutely right. So okay. I, I'd like to think of it in terms of what are the things that uh, make the community what it is. So, you know, the economic engines that provide not only employment, but uh, also uh, contribute to the tax base. They may have importance outside the region, perhaps nationally, perhaps internationally. Mm -hmm. um, really beginning to think about uh, the, the function of those assets 
and what's needed to keep those operational mm -hmm. um, and retain the vitality of the community. Uh, you can do that, uh, as I said, independent of the hazard, and then as you apply the hazards, which is important to the hazard mitigation planning process, mm -hmm. understand where there are gaps and, and be able to use that information to inform the various plans. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity for the grad, and one of the things that uh, is attractive to working with grad, mm -hmm. is that you have all of those planning processes sort of under one roof. And so hopefully the resilience plan process as we go through this with you uh, will be useful to all of your planning efforts. Mm -hmm. So really, I think the one thing that you mentioned in a comment that uh, people don't realize, this is not just for us to do, you know, how we get prepared for any kind of disaster, but also to take care of the infrastructure and assets that could have a you know, bigger impact on this you know, nationally too. Like right. for example, you know, we, you discussed at the meeting that you know, we have got some industrial base that provide uh, you know, a high, high quality aluminum to the defense industry. If there's a disaster occurs there, that would have an impact on there too. So this guy more or less take an inventory of what we have and how we need to be ready to kind of, uh, kind of protect those things as right. well. And, and why is it important and uh -huh. who is it important to? Uh, and, so, and, and then what is it dependent on to be able to operate? So uh -huh. whether it's you know, water, wastewater, power, communications, transportation systems, uh -huh. um, all of those things contribute to the ability of that, uh, that facility to perform its function. And so if we can understand that and understand where those dependency relationships may have, uh, you know, other consequences right. down the road, um, then that helps the, the planning process. You, you mentioned communication. That's something that we, we had a you know, kind of a tough lesson to learn during some of the you know, past disasters where the communication would not communicate with the, you know, appropriate agencies. And you know, is that something that we could look into that? They, they also talked about, uh, you know, doing all that planning and everything else uh, you know, we, we need to have some sort of a group or a, 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 a maybe a body or something looking to those things and right. uh, how, how that would work. Sure. So uh, if you look at the infrastructure resilience planning framework, uh -huh. which is what we are going to be implementing here in grad, working with the hazard mitigation planning process, uh, we start with identifying a core team. Those are the people that are going to be responsible for uh, preparing the resilience plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the important part is engaging a larger body of stakeholders. Who relies on infrastructure? Who operates the infrastructure? In some cases, maybe it's uh, owned by an investor or owned uh, company. Um, obviously, the state has an interest because they have assets that run through the uh, area. And, and so bringing those stakeholders to the table, really understanding um, why these assets are important or these systems, um, where are the priorities? Perhaps you've got, uh, you know, emergency facilities mm -hmm. that need to operate continually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're going to be reliant on various infrastructure to be able to perform that function. Uh, really understanding those issues so that you can have a comprehensive uh, understanding of the network mm -hmm. and then use that information to support your planning. I can see why this is ties directly with the Department of Homeland Security. Right. Seems like when uh, in, in the past we used to get funding from DHS doing some disaster planning and, and working towards the same issues there too. Uh, why grad? Why and, grad? And, and, and uh, have you have any other experience in other, other ge geographical area about the resiliency planning? Sure. So um, I'll start with the why grad okay. question first. Uh, this actually grew out of uh, some interest by the Kentucky Department of Emergency Management um, to try to address repetitive loss issues, primarily due to flooding and oftentimes involving water systems. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the process actually began last year before I came to DHS. Um, but uh, we wanted to tie it to a hazard mitigation planning process in one of the area development districts. Uh, the timing was such, uh, one, that GRAD was due to update their hazard mitigation right. plan. Um, but more importantly, I think a GRAD has a long history of um, you know, testing new procedures or processes, um, being a leader uh, within the Commonwealth. On, uh, on planning. And the idea behind this is to develop a replicable process. Okay. So, uh, you know, 
implement the, uh, the infrastructure resilience planning framework here, mm -hmm. tie it to those other planning processes with the intent of developing an enhanced planning process that can then be replicated uh, throughout the state. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we see this as, as benefiting not only grad, but the entire state of Kentucky, possibly going beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've certainly had, um, we've tied in uh, not only the DHS regional office, uh, we've been working with the uh, Chief of Protective Security uh, and the Protective Security Advisor Network here. Uh, we've also been engaged with FEMA Region 4 office. So we've tried to tie in uh, the national agencies that are, or the federal agencies that are involved with uh, mitigation uh, planning. And it sounds great that you are working in all different areas and all different partners and, and focusing on grad to do this pilot project. This kind of sounds scary too for us <laughs> because we are not done in that level. We have done in the past, uh, you know, and I think one, one thing, that, you know, the, and the, the time has changed too. After 9-11, after the first time happened, uh, right. the DHS got formed and we all did some of the planning and everything else. But the technology is so, it changed so much. So we, we were more concerned about providing security of the water systems, sewer systems, and the bridges and all those things, the power plants. Not as much as cybersecurity. So, how, how would that would play in this role of the resolution plan? Sure. So, obviously, uh, cybersecurity is important because a lot of our infrastructure now is operated right. by uh, cyber based systems. Um, and that has benefits, obviously. Uh, it makes our systems, uh, in some ways, more reliable. Mm -hmm. um, it reduces the, uh, the workload, obviously, for individuals. Um, it also presents uh, some vulnerabilities. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know, a cyber failure or cyber attack could lead to a uh, failure in a physical system. Right. Right. Um, and we've, we've obviously seen some of those things in the news. Um, so it's a little bit outside of the uh, work that I do, uh -huh. but you know, certainly cybersecurity is a priority for the agency. Right. And um, you know, we're certainly working with uh, you know, our counterparts in the agency to uh, look at those issues. In, in your mind, Steve, what, what kind of timing are we talking about? And I know we're gonna be, you know, work, start working on updating our hazard mitigation plans. So will this be kind of hand in hand with that planning? Right, we're gonna talk about this this afternoon in our planning meeting. Um, but the idea is that the uh, infrastructure resilience planning process kind of dovetails with the hazard mitigation planning okay. steps. Uh, and so what we hope to do is be able to uh, align carefully and enhance those steps mm -hmm. uh, and inform the hazard mitigation process as we go forward. Um, what I want to come out of this with is a, a couple of uh, you know, end results. The, the first being to uh, have grad now have a, a more uh, holistic look at, mm -hmm. at the infrastructure systems that are present, um, how they're connected, uh, what their uh, current, um, uh, or what the objective, objectives are for performance, what the current performance might be if the hazard were to occur today. So you have a baseline that'll feed into the hazard mitigation plan, okay. but it'll also be information that could go into your other plans uh, as well, where that's appropriate. It's also going to be a way of establishing a baseline that you can measure progress against. So I, I think once we, well, if I understand, once we put together infrastructure resiliency planning framework, then we got to use those components on everything else we do too. You um, can you, see that that should be part you, of the you know MPO planning or the water sewer planning or right. you know could be you know SEDS and everything else. Right. So I like to think of this as uh, you know what we want to do is move to where resilience becomes a part of right. the planning process, right. Right. Uh, regardless of what's being done. Right. Right. So it becomes ingrained in in the, our day to day activities, mm -hmm. and and that can be not only planning but it can also be an operations right. maintenance, yeah. um, repair and replacement. Mm -hmm. So and I think this this is a true approach of connecting the dots. Yes. And everything, it affects everything, you know. And again, so now we don't have you know, plans in the silos, you know, but also figure out and how you could interconnecting inter and the impact and everything else. You know, this is a great, so it's a great project for us. And I've, uh, you mentioned that what you're going to be learned through our experience in a pilot project gonna be uh, repetitive or at least um, uh, implemented to the other part of the state as well. Right. You know, okay. Yes, and, and perhaps beyond the state. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, okay. 
Well, I guess, you know, you've got another, another, another uh, point I've got to be worried about. Make sure that we do the quality and then the efficiency that we, you know, you're expecting off us. And I'm, I'm really honored that, you know, I have a great staff. You know, to, I'm gonna be, we're going to do that. And I think it's a great uh, uh, in the char charge that you've given us not to do this. You know, so we'll do that. You know, and so. I, as I said this morning, uh -huh. you're the experts on, uh, you know, Green River Area Development District. We're certainly not. But what we do uh, bring to the table is a, a way of thinking about infrastructure and its importance to the area. Uh, and so hopefully that will be a, a, you know, a nice uh, synergistic um, yeah. element and yeah, uh, we'll yeah. be able to uh, yeah. Well, thank you. Thank process. you for being on the show as well. Thank you for coming down to Grat and uh, wish you best of luck. I know you got quite a few meetings and all back <laughs> to DC and everything else. We've been talking to uh, Stephen Kaufman. He's the uh, uh, he's the second ch section chief of the infrastructure development recovery. He's also uh, coming, uh, coming to us, asking us to do a pilot project for the infrastructure resiliency planning framework uh, involving all the planning uh, avenues in the grad region along with the hazard mitigation plan. So, you know, if you have any questions, uh, call me. Uh, they just wait for a while and we're going to be having more and more discussion about this whole topic because this is going to have an impact on everything we do. Uh, for every every planning uh, you know, facets along with some of the services we provide in the seven counties. So again, thank you for watching Garrett Dialogue and have a great day. <laughs>